Okay, this is part two in the Home Semiconductor Fabrication video series. If you haven't seen the first video already, go ahead and watch that. I talk about semiconductor fabrication basics and all the processes. And then in this video, I'm going to show you around my home chip lab and give you an idea of uh, how you can set up your own and do some of these processes by yourself. And then in the next video, we'll go step by step through making either a diode or a transistor or something like that. So. Um, this bench here I have set up with most of my wafer handling and semiconductor fabrication stuff. So these are just some tweezers and stuff. These are wafer tweezers, all stainless steel, and then some plastic Teflon tweezers. Um, this is what I'm using for my spin coating right now. It's far from ideal, but it's a muffin fan from a computer. I clipped all the blades off of it and then I 3D printed this dish, and then I used this tape to hold my wafer down. And this is a power supply. On the back, um, I have a little board I made, and that gets this very close to 3,500 RPM, just so I have it somewhat consistent each time. And uh, I have an illuminator set up uh, with the fiber optic uh, cold light coupling thing, so I can see my work. Um, these are just some chemistry things. This is a hot plate, and this is a 3D rotator mixer. These are some wafer pieces. This one here has a 500 angstrom silicon dioxide layer on it. That's why it appears blue. That's used as a field oxide, or 5,000 angstrom rather. Um, that's a field oxide for fabricating um, field effect devices. These are some other wafers and pieces that I've cleaved up. Um, this is a half of a two inch wafer here. These are some of the chemicals I used during the process. Um, this is hydrofluoric acid, 2.3% and then about 1% hydrofluoric acid. Using that for etching silicon dioxide. Um, two DI water baths. And then some dopants, uh, phosphoric acid solutions, and isopropyl alcohol, I mean water, um, things like that. I have a couple furnaces. Um, that one and the one right there are um, not quite ideal for diffusion, but I can fit entire wafers without you know cleaving them up. So these are great for doing oxide growth. So they get up. Um, this one, you know, it gets it gets pretty hot. You just need about a thousand degrees C to do oxide growth and stuff like that. So. Um, like this two inch wafer here, I did that oxide growth in this uh, furnace here. And it's got a vent port in the top. I have a thermal couple going in there now, and uh, that's great. I can do nitrogen purges and um, get temperature readings, and I can make other atmospheres inside of this one. And let's go around. This is a nitrogen tank. Um, use that during diffusion. You should, it's not completely necessary um, for proof of concept devices, but it really helps out the electrical characteristics if you, if you can purge uh, nitrogen through the furnace um, while you're doing diffusion. And then this thing, uh, but the same temperature as the other one, it's just smaller. But I don't have a quartz boat or anything to put the wafers on, so it gets really dirty. And then this um, is really what you want for diffusion. This is a tube furnace. So it's a quartz tube here. This is a one inch diameter. Um, I got this made from a company called Great Glass. There's a few options online, it's about 35 bucks. and. Um, and that closes like that, and you can put your wafers in there. You push them in with a stainless steel rod, so they're about halfway in the middle. And this thing goes up to 1400 degrees C. Um, got this, I think, like 100 bucks or so on eBay. It wasn't bad. So this is great for doing diffusion stuff. It heats up very quickly, and uh, it's you know it's not the nicest condition. It's got some rust and oxidation on it, but it it uh, does the job. Um, some just like lab supplies and stuff. Um, these are wafer pieces. This is a large six inch wafer. Uh, it's got a copper layer on it. And these are some of the devices that I fabricated. Um, these are diodes, photovoltaics, stuff like that. And then here are some MOSFETs. You can see them. Um, the red little layer in the middle is the gate and there's two like bluish green on either side of it. That's the source and drain. And then there's a substrate connection on the back. I'm just using um, conductive silver epoxy to make these connections because I don't have a wire bonding machine as of now. And uh, here's the process to make MOSFETs. And that's the process to make diodes or solar cells, planar diodes rather. You can make solar cells by um, making connection on either side of the wafer as well, but this is a planar setup. Um, you can do it without the silicon dioxide layer um, if, you, if you do the non-planar. Method. So this is really, um, on this bench here, is most of what's required to make your own transistors and stuff like that in a home environment. And then uh, over here, 
uh, some more semi-conductor related stuff. There's a curve tracer down there. In that box, I have a couple photo resists and their developers. Um, just assorted chemistry stuff like lab supplies. Um, these bottles are great for storing photo resists in. This is vinyl, like sticky card sign vinyl. And I cut this and I can use it to mask the active areas so I can etch the silicon dioxide layers. So I, I use this as a mask. Um, got that on Amazon. Gloves, super important. And up here I have my wafers. So I think this yes, yeah, 25 four inch N type wafers. This is an empty carrier. And then these are 25 each, so it's 50 um, P type two inch wafers here. I've used a few of them. You can pick these up on eBay or you know, surplus places, but all the experiments I've done so far, I've used only three wafers so far. I have my first 25, and I have a sealed another lot of 25, and then a 25 four inch wafers. So I'm in pretty good shape as far as uh, substrate as of now. I think I showed you guys everything on this bench. Um, this is some ammonium hydroxide. That's good for cleaning things. I use that for per, um, preparing surfaces to, for the uh, photoresist because when you apply photoresist, you want a completely hydrophobic surface and you want to do dehydration, baking, and all that good stuff. So when you're preparing stuff for good photoresist adhesion, um, it's great to use ammonium hydroxide or something like that. You want to stay away from rubbing alcohol. Um, these are some photolithography tests. This is like a copper piece of B material, and then this is on a silicon wafer. Um, it says my last name and then Semicon 2016. That was one of the first ones, that's why it looks pretty bad. And uh, oh, I actually exposed that uh, using a DLP projector. So that's a maskless photolithography method and same with this test pattern here. This test pattern is just in the um, developed photoresist. It's not actually etched into the copper as you can see. So that's why the contrast is pretty weak. The uh, line width on this one, there's some other features in there you can't really see. So the word test on the top of my finger right there. And that's 25, the smallest test is 25 micron line width and the largest test is 75 micron line width. So pretty big in the scheme of things. And over here, um, I have thin film deposition stuff, um, RF source for plasma cleaning and stuff. I'm working on the vacuum chamber, this is a National Instruments USB 6009 um, DAC I'm using to build a controller for the vacuum chamber. Over here, a uh, hot cathode ionization gauge controller, watt meter, cor resonant quartz uh, thickness meter so I can get in live time as I'm making films the thickness and rate of those films. And I have Variac to control the thermal evaporation boat. Um, vacuum stuff, that's a heated vapor trap, Varian Navigator uh, 141 turbo molecular pump, some flanges and uh, other high vacuum related stuff, a couple microscopes for semiconductor work, um, that's an icon right there and it's got this awesome readout here that tells me stage movement down to a micron which is pretty sweet, it's a great scope and this is a stereo zoom Curve tracer, and uh, this is where I keep most of the chemicals, or at least the acids involved with the semiconductor manufacturing. Um, so you know, there's hydrochloric, um, this is boric acid and phosphoric acid. These are my main dopants here that I use for the semiconductors. Um, photoresist developer, the hydrofluoric acid I get, of course, from the classic rust stain remover, and some other stuff. Hydrochloric, 37%. Sulfuric acid, I use that for piranha clean. Um, this is a potassium nitrate solution. Uh, stump remover and I can use that for anodic uh, oxidation of silicon and sulfuric acid um, I guess I didn't write the content of that but that's going to be a piranha clean and then RCA clean parts one and two those are um, in H2O2 solution And here's the vacuum chamber. So right now I'm getting this ready to do thermal evaporation of aluminum. And I'm going to be using that aluminum to do metallization of wafers. And then I can pattern that with my photolithography setup, which I'll show you in a second. And then I'll be able to make ICs from that. So that's the chamber. Um, big ISO 500-ish 
thing on the top, um, nice big viewport. ISO 200 viewport right here, so I have plenty of viewing angles, which is awesome. Um, mechanical pump is a rotary vane, it's a Edwards number 12, and then I'm mounting that turbo pump in, um, on that 6 inch con flat right there. On this side, uh, valve Baratron pressure transducer is going to be a low um, vacuum gauge. It goes down to one tour, or starts at one tour rather, and it doesn't really go much below 0 0.001 tour. And then this is my high vacuum gauge. This is a hot cathode ionization gauge. I have a four pin electrical feed through, um, vent valve, the vacuum. I need to get this flange blocked off here. A couple, um, there's three 2.75 inch um, con flats. This is a thermal couple gauge here, and that's gonna be my mid vacuum gauge, uh, NPT thread, so I had to make that adapter plate, basically. And then this is a six inch con flat here. I'm taking that off and then I'm getting a, a 90 degree elbow that goes six inch con flat to ISO 100. And I'm gonna hang my um, turbo molecular pump, which is over there on that table. I'm gonna hang it off uh, right here. And that's gonna be backed, of course, with the org fusion pump. Uh, down here, uh, there's a UPS power supply. That is an 800 amp uh, re rewound microwave oven transformer. And that's uh, attached to these big one gauge welding cables that goes into these massive electrical feed throughs on the bottom and lets me get that current into the chamber so I can do thermal evaporation and those are the two electrodes coming out in there. That's a thermal couple, that white thing. And then on the bottom here is a uh, controller I'm working on for this stuff. And that's the front of it. There's basically a computer in it and some power supply stuff. It runs LabVIEW or Windows 7, I have LabVIEW running on it. And then this DAC board is gonna go in there and it's gonna read you know, pressures for my three pressure gauges, uh, thermocouple readings, backing pressure as well. It's um, I have two mass flow controllers on here, um, so I'm going to be able to control my atmosphere in this, so I can do plasma cleaning, plasma etching, reactive ion etching, uh, sputtering maybe, you know, all, all that good stuff. So that's going to be uh, really a lot of fun playing with that. So that's basically all of my home semiconductor setup. Um, I've been accumulating all of this stuff and then all the stuff on that table over there um, since like October. It's February right now, so still have a long ways to go. This is how I'm patterning my photoresist. Um, it's a not even 720p DLP projector and it's on this mount so I can point it straight down. I put my substrate with the coated photoresist underneath this here. This um, is modified optics, so I can focus to a half inch by half inch square piece. And then um, I can focus down with that, a line width about 50 micron. And then if I focus down to a quarter inch by quarter inch image, I can get down with this um, projector from 1999, I can get down to 25 micron line width um, pretty consistently. So that's, that's awesome. With a newer DLP projector, if I wanted to spend a few thousand dollars, um, theoretically I could go past 10 micron. Um, feature size, which is awesome for a maskless uh, photolithography method like this. So anyway, that's my uh, semiconductor fabrication setup, and uh, I haven't seen many people online or at all um, trying to do this kind of stuff, so it'd be really cool if other people wanted to get into this and start making their own diodes and PN junctions, transistors, stuff like that. I'm going to keep posting YouTube videos as I make progress, uh, trying to make integrated circuits um, on my YouTube channel here, so stay tuned for that and uh, keep an eye out for the third video in this series where I attempt to make a uh, transistor. You know, I'm not sure if it'll work. It may may work or it may not work, and um, if it does, that's great. If it doesn't, then we'll have a fun time uh, looking at it and trying to figure out what went wrong with the fabrication of that. So thanks for watching.